It's our innate yearning as human beings to have peace and calm in our lives. Some people go for walks, some people love to have barbecues in their backyard, some people, like myself, love the sight of the ocean with the sun setting right on the horizon. And then you have the sight of yachts, boats, ships and many other sea vessels. The appearance of these boats and ships are really pleasing to the eyes. And if you want to go a step beyond that thought, it can really spark one's curiosity. So many questions. What does that ship carry? How does it stay afloat? Where does it go? Where is it from? Why is partying on a yacht sound so inviting? Why does seafood while sailing sound so appetizing and sound so luxurious? Who are these people who own super yachts and what do they do? How come sea vessels are readily available to see, but then it feels so out of reach at the same time? Well, let's get right into it. But where do we really start? I'm on a mission to learn everything that I can about yachts and other sea vessels. And if you're on the same boat as I am, join me in this thrilling adventure as we set sail on Marina. And we will be immersing ourselves in this captivating yet mysterious world of boats. I'm sorry, I In this first episode of Marina, I'm going to two interesting places to get my feet wet in the world of sea vessels. Our anchor first drops in Subic. Here there is a maritime history museum, a very fitting restaurant and bar by the water and of course boats on site. Wow. Look at this place. They obviously modeled this museum after an old armed cargo carrier or better known as galleon. As you can see from the canyons, ropes, sails on display, and I must say, it does feel like being on one. Although I imagine the real old galleons would actually feel more dangerous than this one. And it would probably be less appealing to the nose as well. There would be no electricity, maybe some rodents running around as well. And with that in mind, I'm very happy to be living in our current modern era, using only my imagination to relive the past and not actually being in it. Also, I don't think women were actually allowed in armed cargo carrier ships during those times. And so I will be taking this chance to thank all the strong women in history who fought really hard for our rights as women to do anything beyond just knitting and feeding the goats. Going back to the items on display in this museum. These artifacts on display are examples of Chinese luxury goods that were exported from Manila to the Spanish territorial entities in the Americas, which became a part of the first instances of globalization. Trade with Ming China via Manila served a major source of revenue for the Spanish Empire and as a fundamental source of income for Spanish colonists in the Philippine Islands. Once you're done with a quick tour at the museum, you can head on over to the restaurant by the sea. Well, that brief dive into maritime history has certainly developed a fresh palette for exploration of sea vessels, and that certainly deserves a pint. We go to Vascos. Wow, would you look at this place. It feels like dining on an actual pirate ship. Although I have never really been on one, that's definitely on the list. Food and drink options over here will definitely fill you up. But it's the view that really fills the senses over here. Boats and ships within sight, the sun setting and the sound of calm waters. Birds flying by, just perfect. And if 
you've had one too many, don't worry about getting back on the road. Because we don't want that. That's not very safe. They've got rooms that feel like the captain's quarters over here. After that quick journey through time, I am raring to learn more. I am now intrigued to find out how boats are made. You don't know me, my God, you tempt my anxious mind.